You've probably been seeing this acronym around the internet a lot. It stands for World Economic Forum, and it particularly made the rounds during the events of Freedom Convoy, with the implication that the WEF is some shadowy Illuminati secretly pulling the strings behind the government of Justin Trudeau. If Trudeau overreacted in suspending civil liberties to tow a bunch of trucks, it's only because his WEF masters told him to. That's not happening, as I'll explain, but it's not the craziest idea for the simple fact that the WEF does indeed claim it is secretly pulling the strings on world affairs. This is Klaus Schwab, founder of the WEF. He's got ramrod straight posture, an eerie German accent, and he has a notable pension to speak like a Bond villain. Here he is in 2017, claiming his organization has been able to penetrate the cabinets of world governments. What we are very proud of now is a young generation like uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, um, President of, Brazil, of uh, Argentina and so on, so that we penetrate the cabinets. So yesterday I was at a, rece at a reception for Prime Minister Trudeau and I would know that half of this cabinet or even more half of, uh, half of this cabinet are for our uh, actually young noble leaders of the world grateful. And it's not just Klaus. Here's a 2016 video in which the group claims that the future will be one in which you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. They're also the ones who invented the term the Great Reset to refer to the COVID-19 pandemic. That's right, you were laid off from your service job and your marriage fell apart while you were trapped in your two-bedroom apartment for six months. But these guys think the whole thing is awesome because it will promote green infrastructure or something. So yeah, they're a little out of touch. The WEF's main gig is organizing the annual Davos Summit. It's a super elite conference where the world's most powerful government and corporate leaders gather to network while eating $50 burritos. It's like any number of similar international gatherings like the G20, the Summit of the Americas, or the Commonwealth Heads of Government Summit. But this one gets all the attention because its organizers obnoxiously claim that its super rich attendees are selflessly making society better. As Vanity Fair put it, Davos is where the uber-rich schmooze and strike deals under the guise of saving the world. But just because you have a bunch of powerful people coming to your namby-pamby conference every year doesn't mean you control them. Donald Trump's been to Davos a couple times, and let's just say he's not really down with their globalist vision of unrestricted free trade. Former conservative leader Andrew Scheer was selected for the WEF's Young Global Leaders program back in the day, and his main job these days is the very un-WEF pursuit of putting out viral videos about how central bankers suck at their jobs. Another young global leader? Vladimir freaking Putin. If Klaus Schwab could really tell WEF alumni what to do, here's a guess that he would tell them not to unilaterally launch a devastating territorial war with profound consequences for global supply chains. But wait a minute, didn't I hear Justin Trudeau parroting WEF talking points in a speech to the United Nations? Yes, you did. This pandemic has provided an opportunity for a reset. Canadian Conservative MP Michelle Rempel Garner was a Davos attendee once upon a time, and she said it was basically like a really, really expensive academic conference where you might bump into Angela Merkel in the bathroom. But had this elitist club ensnared the Canadian PM? Garner's take is that Trudeau has a habit of parroting whatever buzzword he last saw on Twitter, and that particular week it just happened to be the WEF. So you'll have to make a decision, dear viewer. Does a milk toast Swiss club secretly control the Canadian government, or is the Prime Minister of Canada a suggestible dope? Hmm.